Hi, welcome to this eighth video out of ten on the product configuration models and the setup of those. My name is Jens Christensen, I'm the program manager for Western Computer. And what we'll talk about today is about the attribute based pricing and how to set that up and when they can be activated. We are in the picture of all of our product configuration models and for each of these models you can set up price models and you can set up price models criteria. So the price models can be applied in all companies and they can carry multiple currencies. So you can have different rules and you can have different conditions and expressions to follow the specified currency, but they can also be defaulted from the defaulted currency. Additionally, what you can do is once you go through setting up the pricing, once you go through the configuration, it can actually look into what type of customer you're on, what type you have, or what type of an order type it is. That's the price model criteria that can give you some identification on when this price model is active for you. And lastly, it can even give you a price breakdown in terms of a document that can be attached to your sales order line. And that's something I'll show you later as well. So the first thing I'd like to show you is the price models. So the setup of the price model is in here. And you can see that right now there's just one standard price model. And I'm going to go in and this one follows whatever speaker solution or whatever item or whatever configuration model that you're on. So inside of this price model, this is where you can set up your constraints and everything. So first thing you see here is you can set up a default currency. You can set up the current currency. So the default currency comes from your parameters, and then you can set up additional currencies here. So on this example here, we do have the base price of the speaker solution, and then we have some expressions that where you will add or subtract depending on what you select throughout the configuration. So the example is here is that if you want a cable, then you add a price to it. However, if the size is 2, then you subtract, then you don't have to pay that much. And if the size is 30, then this is added to it instead. In the last video, we talked a bit about subcomponents and so on. And actually, you can set it up on the subcomponents as well to follow the rules when you run through these calculations. You see that the high-end speaker has a base price, and you also can set up conditions that will have an effect on the price or not. And then the insurance, obviously, you can also set it up and define how much that will cost. So in this expression here, we actually look into the insurance period and then we multiply it by a fixed price by insurance period and that will be added to the price. Before we go back and talk about the price model criteria, I'd like to show you also that as soon as we change it to USD, you can see that the price changes. You could have some different rules. You don't. I don't believe we have it here, but you could have some, some different rules here. But you can also you see the default expression, and then you can see the expression that actually is active for that currency, and that follows obviously the currency that you've set up on your sales order. Okay, so going back one step here, I'd like to talk about the price model criteria. The price model criteria actually tells you when this price model is active or when we do want to select this one. So you can set up these criteria and you associate it to one of the price models you have and then you can define the order type. So the possible order type, let me create a new line so you can see it. So the types of order types that you can select from is or quotation type for customer, quotation type prospect, and sales order. You can also set a validity dates on it so it can expire so you can have different prices given the periods and set it up here as well. Now, some of you might ask if it has any connection to the trade agreements functionality in AX or in Dynamic 365, and I can tell you no, it has not. There is no combination here, but there is certainly a lot of opportunity to build a condition-based pricing or attribute-based pricing in this features here. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a sales order and or sales order line with this one here, and we can try to look at how the price flows through and it actually changes in um, real time while you create your sales order or while you configure the sales order line. So I'm going to go ahead and going to go into my uh, where's my sales orders here and I will create a new line here okay so add line D06 okay and as always we'll go into my configuration so already now we see there is a base price this is the total price of all the things that we've selected 
So right now the base price or the, the configured price is the amount here. This sales order is obviously in US dollars. Now let's say that you had a different customer who worked in a third currency where you didn't have anything set up here. Obviously you would have to have a currency converter but then it would look at the currency conversion between that currency and then the default currency that we had set up in our configuration parameters. So in this case that would be the euros. So I will go ahead and then you can see here what's going to happen if you notice the price while I click through here. So I'm going to click true and you see the price change. The reason for the, the price change already is that there is a default period here. So it, this one changed with two times what is 59.95 dollars and so it added a good 120 almost 120 dollars to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some different let's put oak in and you see that there's that was not any change here and then we'll do some pricing here and we'll set the price. So now we see that we have an end price that's called 1779.10. You can look at the price breakdown here already now and what that will do is that it will generate this Excel spreadsheet here. And let me just open it up so you can see it. And so you can see that you have the price and all of these attributes that gave you the prices and also how the price is broken down.